Hello everyone. This is Arun Kumar and the topic what I would like to discuss you in this video is about sexual reproduction and flowering plants. Before getting into the topic, I'd like to give you a small introduction about what is reproduction. If we split that word reproduction, re that is again production is to create. So reproduction is a very important vital process that involves the procreation of new organism from the parental organism. What for this reproduction to occur is to sustain sustain as well as to create a new organism of its own kind even after the biological death of the parents and this reproduction process is broadly divided into two major domains one is the asexual reproduction the other one is the sexual reproduction the topic what we took for today's discussion is about sexual reproduction if we see a plant so you can see root stem leaf and flower so if the propagation is done with the help of root stem leaf then that form falls into the category of asexual reproduction but if you see here it's a very beautiful structure that what you are seeing is the flower so flower is the ultimate part that plant which is going to perform the sexual reproduction in plants the sexual reproduction involves three important step one is pre fertilization fertilization and post fertilization events in this picture now you can see a close up shot of a flower so in this the red background that what indicate is the petal and what you see here is a dusty part here is called as the pollen grain which is present in the part called as the anther and this three lobed structure what you are seeing is the stigma in the next slide i'm going to show you exactly what a typical flower is and with all its parts here is the typical representation of a flower in this what you can see is a green base of the flower then followed by a leafy structure then you can see a very colorful part here followed by some internal structures so now i am going to explain you each and every parts technically the first part what we see here is the base of the flower which is otherwise called as stalk of the flower simply called as thalamus t h a l a m u s followed by the thalamus the leafy structure what we see here is given a sepal which is otherwise called as calyx c a l y x so the main function of this calyx is when this flower is in the state of bud i mean before the flower widen up so this calyx has promoted has provided the protection for all the underlying floral structures then followed by the next whorl is the very very brightest whorl here called as the petal which is otherwise called as corolla so it is simply called as petal but technically called as corolla which means it is the brightly colored and the beautiful part of a flower but not in all the case because in some flower the petal may even be reduced or simply be absent so in that case the flower it will act some other strategy to attract and to enhance the process of pollination coming to this part is what we call it as the male component which is otherwise called as andrecium a n d r o e c i u m andrecium so andrecium is otherwise called as the male component of the flower it comprises of two structure this bilobed structure what you see is called the anther a n t h e r and a small slender thing that connects the anther to the base of the flower is called as the filament f i l a m e n t so together called as the stamen so stamen technically called as andrecium this comprises of two parts the anther as well as the filament that connects the anther to the base of the flower now the very important the part that what we are going to discuss the last is about the female component here so this is the female component that is given in the color green in this picture fish the basal part what it is swollen up here is called as the ovary o v a r y ovary inside the ovary it is given a light green color called as the ovule o v u l e already it is marked here and then followed by a long slender tube 
that is the present called as style s t y l e then followed by this is the very very important place here which is going to receive the pollen grain during the process of pollination called as stigma s t i g m a so stigma style ovary and ovule together called as gynoecium g y n o e c i u m which is otherwise called as carpel which is the female reproductive structure of a flower so what are the parts we have discussed here is the thalamus and then followed by the calyx and then next to the corolla which is brightly colored and the male component together called as andrisium that comprises of two structure anther and the filament then the very important part is the gynoecium which is otherwise called as the carpel that comprises of ovary ovule then followed by style and then stigma here this is a small animation that shows and that gives you a very clear differentiation about male and the female structure of a flower so now again telling you the green part is called what we call it as a stalk of the flower then followed by the calyx is hidden here and then the red color that what you see here is called as the petal and now you see here is what we call it as the anther and the structure that connects the anther to the base of the flower is called as the filament and here is the central portion that what i previously told you as gynoecium that is the female part of the flower look at this beautiful animation you see how wonderfully and beautifully the flower is keep opening here you see the part what it is the very first is the calyx the calyx is the very first part to open up then showing the next whorl called as the petal which is here represented as white and then what you see the bilobed structure that is widening is the anther and here the green one the center one is called as the stigma once the flower opens up now the next process is the transfer of pollen grain from anther to stigma that process is called as pollination p o l l i n a t i o n pollination so pollination is the process of transfer of pollen grain from anther to stigma if that process that takes place in the same flower then that process is called as self pollination self pollination so self pollination involves the transfer of pollen grain from anther to stigma of same flower there is one more the case called as cross pollination that is it involves two different flower of two different plants now here you see this is the animation that represents cross pollination and you see a bee is involved in transferring the pollen grain from one anther to the stigma of another flower so this is what we call it as cross pollination c r o s s cross pollination p o l l i n a t i o n cross pollination is the transfer of pollen grain from one flower to the stigma of another flower so from here it is getting transferred by here so this pollination whether it is a cross pollination or self pollination the act of transfer is enhanced either naturally or like what it is being here like an insect or even birds or even mammals and human beings so such kind of organism that involves in the process of getting some pollination is called as pollinating agents here you see it is a beautiful representation of the flower with the potential pollinating agent that cross all over the flower now you see here this is the part actually the part where more nectar is present so in search of nectar this pollinating agent so now you see here it's the ant and this is a small very variant of a bee they all be very actively present in search of nectar at that time of searching nectar there is a possibility of getting some pollen grains dusted on the body of insects so once they crawl over the surface of the flower when it reaches the part of the stigma present here there is a chance that the pollen grain may get landed on the stigmatic surface thus enhancing the process of pollination so now you see in this picture the pollen is getting landed on the stigmatic surface and it has completed 
pollination. Once that, the pollen grain starts germinating and it forms a long tube called as pollen tube. This pollen tube, now it is taking two important generative cells that is going to transform later into sperm cells. And inside the ovule, it is going to fuse one with the polar nuclei, the other one was the egg cell. So next, the ovule is now being transformed into seed and the ovary, it keeps bulged into fruit. So this is the post modification of the flower after fertilization. What happens to the flower once it completes the process of pollination and fertilization? So if you see this diagram, it is now clear for you to understand what are the events that takes place in a consequence manner. So you see this is a picture of a tomato inflorescence. What does it mean by inflorescence? When you see a single flower, then that is a solitary flower. When you see a bunch of flower like this, it is what we call it as inflorescence. Essence. So now you see this is actually the day one of the flower which is very beautifully represented with exposing all of its yellow petals. But you see now in this picture that the flower once after getting pollinated no more the petals are needed. So it swirl and fall off and here in this case of tomato the calyx that is a green part present here is remain attached. That is why this kind of calyx calyx is called as persistent calyx and then next you see inside this flower the carpal part present here that the ovary keeps swells and that forms the future fruit here and it is about to swirl and fall of the style and the stigma so what I am concluding from this is once the flower is getting pollinated and fertilized so there is no need of maintaining the, the petal part and in most of the cases calyx too will swirl and fall off but here in this tomato the calyx remain attached till the fruit ripens up so what happens to the ovary and the ovule after fertilization so already we have discussed now you see the ovary has completely taken its shape that transforming into fruit and here in this case still the calyx remain attached to the fruit that is why it is the best example for persistent calyx when we take a section of this tomato fruit you could see the pulp cavity that encloses seed so the transformation occurred here from flower to the fruit is the ovary has transformed into the fruit and the ovule inside the ovary has taken up to the process of making seed here in this slide you can see the transformation process of a ovary that is ripening up into a fruit. Here in this slide you can see the cross section of the papaya fruit. So actually this papaya once it was in the state of flower it was called as the ovary and inside now it's called a seed but previously it was called as ovule. In this slide you can see how the plant is rising up from seed. Now you see here from wheat it is using all the reserved form of energy in its cotyledon and it is pushing up the ground and here is the best example you can see the tomato seed is sprouting how it is gaining energy until it starts doing photosynthesis the cotyledon supports the embryo to take up the process of life. In this slide you can see it is a representation of the plant life cycle. So from here let us start. So the seed as we discussed now it is holding the future baby plant inside it and it also having the reserved food in the form of the cotyledon. Once the seed germinates it is going to push up the plumule and it is going to push down the radical part later it is going to transform into shoot as well as root so once the plant it starts making the process of photosynthesis till that the cotyledon supports the plant by providing energy and once the plants have taken up growth now the next step is the reproductive phase of the plant by making flower structure as we discussed already the flower is a part in which the sexual reproduction is about to take place and once that the pollination process happens that is the transfer of pollen grain from anther to stigma once that process gets completed the next is the post fertilization event of development of ovary into fruit and inside the ovary what is the ovule has transformed into seed so with this the life cycle of the plant keeps 
repeated. Hope the session was useful. Thank you for watching.